What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and finally we are at the Geneva Motor Show 2017 and this video is going to be probably one of my most difficult challenges to date. I'm just about to head inside to the hall where everything is going to be kicking off. All of the brand new cars are going to be unveiled and there is going to be tons of brand new customised supercars that I'm going to aim to capture on camera. Now throw back to a, well now probably quite a few years ago where I was in central London doing loads of cars spotting and on the internet on supercars of London my subliminal opinion on quite a lot of cars was out there on the internet basically down to the cars that I chose to film and then chose to upload mainly being Lamborghinis and Ferrari however since developing the supercars of London YouTube channel and being able to drive some of the quirkiest and weirdest cars I feel that some of my perceptions of various manufacturers have changed for example I never used to be a fan of BMW or Porsche but at the moment I really like what they are doing I never filmed Aston Martins in Central London because there were so many of them but now it is one of my favorite manufacturer there is going to be so much happening today and I'm purposefully going to be leaving out the Lamborghini Huracan Performante because there is a separate video coming with some very very exciting news about my new car so let's head into the main hall check out some of the cars that are going to be on display today and I'm going to go through some of the manufacturers that I like some of them that I dislike go over some of the new cars that have been unveiled and hopefully get my own opinion on what they're going to look like on the road when they start hitting our streets so uh Let's go and head straight to Ford. Let's start with Ford because I'm actually here as a guest of Ford and they have launched the brand new Fiesta ST. I was out at Cologne at the end of 2016 to have a look at the launch of the Fiesta and they have launched this, the Fiesta ST, which I think is a stunning car. However, I also think that is, uh, there's a quite a lot of scope for a Fiesta RS. It's not as aggressive as the old Fiesta ST and I still think that they could have done a little bit more with flared wheel arches. They didn't listen to me from November, as you'd expect. Um, but I do think it is gonna be a wicked car to drive and I cannot wait to get my hands on one of these to get behind the wheel of it and potentially recreate the vomit challenge that me and Sam did in Monaco in 2015. I have stumbled across the ABT apt Audi R8 V10 Plus which was kind of leaked a couple of days before the show and I have to say the lines look so much more aggressive than the standard Audi and um, I'm a fan of the body kit. I actually think it looks sick so uh, let's have a quick walk around and then move on somewhere else. So Lamborghini is just to my left but I feel like I'm in the middle of all of the baby supercar manufacturers all of the brand new ones we have got Zenvo right here behind me we've got Koenigsegg and behind me to the left we have also got Pagani unveiling the Waira Roadster for the first time for the last three years that I've been coming to the Geneva Motor Show there have been rumors that Pagani are going to be launching their Waira Roadster and finally in 2017 they have launched it is a slightly redesigned look with uh, a pretty aggressive rear but at the same time it still remains a very very pretty car the Chiron launched last year come in a slightly different color still pretty cool Ooh, tie rider this is the first c63 amg coupe that i've seen that has been tuned and customized we've got a dmc wing and it has been wrapped lowered aftermarket wheels carbon fiber diffuser this thing looks seriously mean and then we move on to my babies the hurricanes and this one is a beautiful spec i have no idea what exhaust system it's got but i bet it's loud love the wheels adv ones and a dmc full body kit this wing actually talking about wings on hurricanes i don't usually like rear wings on the hurricane because it ruins the uh look of the car it ruins the lines but look engine slats looks awesome wing that matches the lines of the car looks awesome and then check out this dmc i want that engine bay <laughs> that is the best of both worlds glass engine bay so you can see the engine but it is still slatted i think that's my favorite part of the show that's my favorite part of the show so far guys i have not seen this car in so long or a version of a gumball and mirage gt in so long and uh well just look at it look how ridiculous this car is i think this would be in uh my top five garage dream garage it is the most ridiculous thing ever and sounds like you wouldn't believe it is next to some sort of purple monster with the most ridiculous rear wing 
in the world. Now the great thing about the Geneva Motor Show is it is neutral ground for everyone which is why every every manufacturer releases their flagship vehicles here because Switzerland is in the middle of Europe no one is on their own playing ground. For example BMW is right next to their rival Mercedes. Now at Frankfurt BMW and Mercedes would fight for position trying to get the prime position but at Geneva it's a free-for-all. So let's have a look at what Mercedes have got. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be more exciting than that side. And yes, to begin with, we have got the G650 Laundelet Mercedes Maybach G-Wagon thing that Tim went on safari with. Probably gonna be the bit, this thing should live in America. This is about the same size as all of the normal cars in America and uh, would actually get shrunk by most things at the SEMA Motor Show, but here it stands out. And then we have got this, the Green Beast, or the Beast from the Green Hell. It is the AMG GTR. This is the first time that I've actually seen this car in the flesh. So uh, let's have a look at it. Now the one thing that has disappointed me about the AMG brand is the fact that Mercedes have not only launched the GTR which I mean is an incredible looking car but then they have then turned every other AMG GT to look like it with the new revised upside down angry grill the new AMG GTS is uh, well it's gonna look pretty similar just without the Mansory inspired body kit which is a shame because the AMG GTS when it first came out was really cool and now I feel like they are kind of overdoing it but uh, the GTR is cool Definitely cool, 577 brake horsepower. Mine was 625, but we'll keep that quiet, Mercedes. I'm going to try a pretty, pretty, I don't know whether it's a stupid thing or not, but I'm gonna go and try and see the brand new Porsche GT3. Naturally aspirated, comes in manual and PDK, which in this day and age is pretty rare. But let's try and brave the crowds and get in and have a look at the new GT3. And I think they launched a new Panamera, but GT3 all the way. It's a little bit scary in there. There are many, many suits. Mark Webber is pretty much central to my screen right now. And the GT3. Now over the years, Bentley haven't been the car at the top of my priority list when it comes to filming or even driving, but every single time that I come to the stand on the Geneva Motor Show, I just think that they excel themselves every single time. They've got a beautiful looking sports car concept thing, but they've also got the brand new Super Sports, which, uh, well, it's red and blue. We have made it to the lower level of the Geneva Motor Show and now there are three stands that we really need to focus on. That is Ferrari, Aston Martin and McLaren. Ferrari have got the A12 Superfast, Aston Martin have got the Valkyrie, which I do believe is the coolest name of any car. It's the Aston Martin Red Bull collaboration car, which was codenamed RM's little, 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 little Nebula. Um, that is now being called the Valkyrie. I've never seen that car, but I just absolutely love all of the dimensions and think it's the most futuristic thing in the world. Put that name next to the 812 Superfast and you kind of get what I mean in terms of naming cars and the Valkyrie is so cool. And then obviously the McLaren have got the 720S and apparently they are bringing a new color. So already I filmed the 720S, but I want to see it in different specs as I requested at the end of my McLaren video. So um, let's have a look, head over to Ferrari. I think Aston Martin, yeah, Aston Martin's press conference is at 11 a.m. I feel like I've been filming like a madman today. Ooh. Old Porsches. I think I'm at the rough stand. My arm is starting to hurt, so uh, let's head over to Ferrari, see if they've unveiled the super fast yet. I have no idea. Well, Ferrari is, uh, I would probably say, too busy. I was too late. I've found out that people were queuing around two hours before to get front row seats to the 812 super fast. So I'm hoping that I can go back a little bit later when things have died down. But I don't know whether this has been planned on purpose, but Ferrari and McLaren are doing their press conferences around 10 minutes apart. So I'm gonna go over to the McLaren stand and see if I can get some front row access for the 720S because Ferrari is literally a joke. Last year, Ferrari weren't doing that many big things at the Geneva Motor Show, so it was a pretty boring stand and pretty quiet the entire time. But this year, yeah, I can't even get anywhere near it. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm really proud to present to you the first model in the second generation of the McLaren Super Series. The McLaren 
McLaren 720S. With all the chaos going on, I feel sorry for these guys. Anyone wanna, anyone wanna take a look? No? Hey guys, I've come to the Alfa Romeo stand, having fresh off the uh, Stelvio press drive, they've got the Quadrifoglio Alfa Romeo Giulia, um, which I have since been told quite a few times that it is not a QV. Tony has been misleading me and Sam. However, they have got the Quadrifoglio version of the Stelvio, which is ridiculous. I didn't even know they'd have it. So uh, let's take a closer look at this car. The wheels are stunning. This car is a serious McCann arrival. Oh, I'm a, I want to drive it. I just want to drive it. What do you think? Based on the Hurricane R8 platform, kind of like a baby Centenario Lamborghini. In pictures, I don't think it looked that cool, but here, seeing it right now, I want it. I love the Liberty Walk ducktail. Let's quickly take a look around the back so that you can see the ducktail. Oh my god, look at the front canards. Four Giato wheels as standard. Look at that ducktail. Oh my god. This is why I love Liberty Walk. Oh my god, that's the coolest thing ever. I need pictures. I need pictures. Now with the chaos of McLaren taking place and there was a massive crowd around Ferrari, I've spent the last half an hour having a sit down because I've just been <laughs> quite tired waking up at half past six in the morning after about three hours sleep from editing the video from the night before and I haven't seen one picture of the 812 Superfast surface on the internet at all. My timeline has been completely taken up by the McLaren 720, the brand new Porsche GT3 and the Lamborghini Huracan Performante. So let's try and brave the crowd and go and check out the Ferrari myself. I think it got launched in satin black. So, not, ins not entirely sure that's the best colour for a Ferrari, but let's go and have a look. It's not the greatest angle, let's have a look at the... Uh... Right, let's try and get a sneak preview of the uh, red one. So I literally ran out of battery as the Ferrari 812 Super Fast was just rotating on a circle and I was waiting for it to just get a nice front on shot so that we could together try and work out whether we liked the car or not. But anyway, my battery died and that was Geneva Motor Show in one day, trying to hit as many stands as possible. And for me to try and go around and get an understanding of where the manufacturers, where the brands are going. I think the Porsche GT3 is really awesome. And for the, for the inner drivers, the manual gearbox is a very, very cool option, but it's so much slower than the PDK that I'll be intrigued to actually find out who orders a manual and who orders a PDK. Let me know in the comment box below if you would order a manual brand new Porsche GT3 or whether you would go for the PDK because resale's slightly better, the car's a lot faster and everything is a little bit more enjoyable. Liberty Walk is very cool. Lamborghini, like I said, there is gonna be a separate video which I need to shoot right now that my battery has charged. But there we go, that is Geneva Motor Show 2017 in one video. So you guys get to see some of the cars, a bit of my reaction and what to expect from 2017 and 2018 with cars on the road. So Thank you so much for watching and supporting. I'm absolutely shattered. I feel like I'm just going to have to lie down in this bed because, I, yeah, I would love to know how many miles I've walked this morning running around to all of the stands. But it was a load of fun, and now I'm headed back to the UK. But tomorrow there is another instalment on my Lamborghini and when it is coming to the UK. So stay tuned to that. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give it a thumbs up, and let me know in the comment box below what is your favourite car from the Geneva Motor Show 2017. And yep, like I said, I will see you tomorrow, guys. Take care. Thank you for watching.